Okay, first of all, who gives a shit whether or not Colin Cowturd believes in the Jets? Did anybody pay attention to Hard Knocks? Did anybody pay attention to last year during uh, the summer and when he was there and preseason and everything leading up to his injury, even after the injury? Anybody, anybody pay attention to when he came back to the building during the season and he, and, he, and he attended games? Did anybody pay attention to how the team responded to him? Obviously, Mike Florio didn't. What are we doing here? Well, what we're going to do on our first video, uh, right now we're recording this uh, in late June, and OTAs are done, rookie minicamp is done, uh, Jets minicamp, veteran minicamp is done. It's all done. And now it's all about the final break before it really begins. The real journey for 2024 begins, and that is training camp. So we still have about, I think, a little over a month to go. Uh, I think this is also going to be the perfect time to do this video, and this new show, because of the season that we're about to embark on. I think this is going to be a special season. The reason I think it's going to be a special season, or I should say the only reason I think it won't be special, is if Aaron Rodgers gets hurt again. And if he's out for a significant amount of time again. I think even if he misses a handful of games, I still think this is going to be a magical season. So uh, the only way, in my mind, that the New York Jets are not in the postseason in 2024 and uh, are not going to go on the type of journey where we're going we're, we're to be able to shut a lot of mouths. And I'm going to go over those mouths uh, on this video. Let's get started now by going over. And again, what we're going to be doing here is we are going to go down a list of uh, different takes, clips. You pro you've probably seen a lot of this already over the last couple of months. Uh, and... I so uh, that's why I thought it was a good idea for us to kind of just a perfect time training camps coming up and we are going to kind of say, you know what, we're doing our first show. Let's recap everything that happened when the season ended to now, all the little things, the important things, the big stories that happened in the off season for the jets. Let's talk about that and bring up, and I know we're going to be rehashing a lot of it. Some of it just happened a week or two ago, but some of it happened, you know, two months ago, four months ago. Oh yeah. That's an old story. But again, I just want to make sure that we put it all together and I give you my opinion on it because I didn't create any videos at the time to put my opinion on it. There are some good quality uh, Jet fans, people, members of the media that I, I feel can, can stick up for the team when they should be stuck up for. Okay, This isn't about being blind to your team and your franchise and everything they do is great and I love the owner and I love the GM and I love the coach and I love the players and they could do no wrong. Of course, that's not what that's about. What this is about. Uh, I know I have a lot of uh, viewers who have followed me from my days in the radio. Matter of fact, this picture right here and that uh, press credential right there was more than likely uh, and again, I'm, I'm, it's possible I, 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 I actually that that's one that I had covering a college football game. It might have been like one of those August preseason type of big game matchups. I think it was it might have been Ohio State Miami. I don't know why I'm thinking about those two teams right now, but um, it could have been that type of matchup. And it was in the it was in the Meadowlands at the time, uh, and because I'm pretty sure, right? 
uh, again, my, my mind, but that was still the Meadowlands. And I just happened to venture into where I could go with my credentials. And, I, oh, look at here. Okay. Uh, and I took advantage of that. But for the most part, and matter of fact, I can show you some of these other clips here. I'll give you this picture that I took. This was uh, because I had credentials, uh, care of Dan, uh, Dan Leberfeld. Dan, if you are not, uh, if you're not a Jet fan, you probably don't know who Dan is. As a Jet fan, uh, I would say there's a good amount of fans that do know who Dan is because he is the uh, founder and editor of Jets Confidential Magazine. And uh, Dan and I did a lot of uh, Jets video, well, not videos, but we did a lot of Jet radio shows back in the day when I was down in South Florida. That's where I got my start in the radio business. Uh, Dan would come on. We'd have jet interviews and talk a lot about the Jets. Um, and uh, anytime they came into town uh, for that, you know, there were several years that I was with Dan talking a lot of Jets and getting to know him and, and, and that. Uh, Dan would give me an extra credential. And I, I had access to go to the games in Miami. And this was one of my pictures. So this is probably... this. Is, I don't even probably. This is the best picture I've ever taken because I have a Hall of Fame running back right there. And I think that's an awesome picture right there. So that was a picture I took under Dan uh, Leberfeld's, uh, under his credentials. Then uh, here's another photo that I showed you. So this is another picture I took. So this was, uh, it looks like it was towards the end of the game. And this is when you were allowed onto the field. I think it's about five minutes. I don't know how if it's changed now, but five minutes to go. You're up in the booth with the rest of the media. They say, okay, now it's five minutes. You can go down to the field. And that was one of the areas I was allowed to go. And this was a picture I took. Of course, you have Tested Verde, Chad Pennington. Um, now, this is an awesome picture because you, this this is a gentleman you, you, I'm not sure you recognize him. You might have to zoom in, but... This guy became our head coach, and this guy was our head coach for about five minutes and is now a legendary retired NFL head coach, Bill Belichick. So this was when Bill Parcells was coaching the team. Eric Mangini was a part of Bill Parcells' staff, and Bill Belichick was the defensive coordinator, and Mangini was part of Belichick's defensive staff. So I took this picture before the game, and this was awesome because Bill Belichick is looking at me taking the picture. How awesome is that? Huh? It's awesome. Uh, oh, yeah. I didn't show this one. Marty Lyons. Because, see, that's me. And I'm in a different getup as you could. Actually, that's the getup I had. I think that's the one I used for the game. I don't know where my credentials are, but maybe I have them, like, you know, hanging somewhere. But that's me and uh, Marty Lyons. So it's probably the same game. Uh, and this is me and Marvin Jones. Marvin and I hung around uh, a little bit back in the day. So, matter of fact, Marvin came. He was a guest of mine at the Pete Rose Ballpark Cafe. I believe that is the Pete Rose Ballpark Cafe logo. This is not the Pete Rose Ballpark Cafe. This was at the NFL draft. I forget which draft it was. It might have been. I was at several at the time uh, doing uh, draft shows at Radio Row. And Marvin was there. And this is uh, Marvin Jones. And this is Drew Rosenhaus. This is Drew Rosenhaus. And this was Marvin's agent. And that's me. And this was, see the, the, the shirts here, because this was at the Marvin Jones Foundation. So he had like, a, I think it was like a get together. Uh, they put together for Marvin Jones Foundation every year. Uh, and that was really cool. So Marvin Jones, matter of fact, Marvin Jones' son is currently, I think he's still in college. I think he's still playing. I don't know if he's still playing for Florida State or where he's playing right now. But he is, I believe, still in college playing football for an FBS uh, Power 5 conference. So there you go. So those are some of the photos because Marvin Jones, as you know, was a really good Jets linebacker back in the day. Uh, Mar Marty Lyons, I believe, is still doing radio for the Jets. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not in New York. Couldn't tell you. All right. There you go. And again, the best picture. Now, 
let's go ahead. I tell you what, let us start. I want to start. Let's see which one. Let's go with the hit piece. The no, not yeah. I think let's talk about uh, sports because this one came out just recently. Matter of fact, this was the uh, Sports Illustrated article that came out. Oh, actually, I didn't realize this came out February first. Why did I think this came out? Okay, I was thinking about something else then. So let's check it out. All right, this is from uh, SI Jets Country, and here we go. Jets a bleeping mess with Aaron Rodgers as de facto general manager. And and I love this. I talked about this in the athletic hit piece video. Claims blockbuster report. All right, we're going to get a lot of that. Now, claims, rumors, sources. Love it. Okay. So now, uh, in this article, talking about the low point of the Achilles injury, uh, and then here, here we go. But now issues of dysfunction are oozing to the surface with the athletic uh, citing its communication with 30 sources. Don't you love that? 30 sources. Do you know who they are? I don't. Do you? You don't because they never tell us. Not one. We don't know any of them. Okay. But, uh, as you can tell, not only from some of the videos that we're going to clips that we're going to throw in there to this video, throw into the video, you're going to find out uh, that all of these, or at least the ones I'm showing you, remember I told you there's some good ones who don't fall for this, but uh, there are uh, quite, a, uh, quite a number of members of the media, including in New York, who just believe that, hey, if, it, if they said it, if it's a source then it must be true. So, you know how I feel about that. Because I think it's just such a fucking mess. Even though this is about a Jets coach telling the athletic something has to change. Okay? I 100% or 99.9% .9 guarantee you that coach is no longer with the Jets. All right, talk about a few other things. And then we get in, once again, sources in the expose describe Rodgers as the de facto general manager who was bowed down to by actual GM Joe Douglas. And then you get into the whole Nathaniel Hackett thing. And how about this? Rodgers isn't the assistant GM. One AFC general manager told The Athletic. Joe Douglas is the assistant general manager. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know why this is really cool to talk about right now? Because we are through another... Off season, pretty much. There's going to be another move or two made between now and then. Uh, otherwise, you can check out, because there's no better depth chart in the biz for the Jets or any NFL team or even college football than rlads.com. So there's the Jets depth chart right here. You can check it all out at rlads.com. This is the Jets team right now. Now, this is what I want to go over here just quickly. As I say that. And we're going to go over all the big catches. Free agency, trades, draft. Well, yeah, draft. Mike Williams. Okay? Mike Williams. No Aaron Rodgers ties. Okay? Tyron Smith. No Aaron Rodgers ties. John Simpson. Morgan Moses. No ties. Let's go here. How about the two running backs that were drafted? No ties to Aaron Rodgers. Jordan Travis. No ties to Aaron Rodgers. Who else did the Jets pick up this offseason? Here are the two draft picks. No ties. Matter of fact, this was the thing we're going to get into. Picking a tackle instead of Brock Bowers. What do you think Aaron Rodgers would have preferred? Probably Brock Bowers. Now, there's maybe you could say the Corley pick was Aaron Rodgers. I don't. But uh, that's the one guy early in the draft where, hey, they got a weapon for him in the draft. 
And Aaron Rodgers, very appreciative and complimentary about Corley. But again, he's not making draft picks. And you don't see any ties to Aaron Rodgers there. In other words, he's not from Cal. Or uh, he is, I don't know, not from Wisconsin. I don't know. All right, anyone else here on offense? I don't see if not on the first couple of uh, rows. Who really cares, right? Defense, Kinlaw. Hey, San Francisco. Is that a tight Aaron Rodgers? No. Hassan Reddick. We'll get into him in a little bit. No. Who else? Anybody else here? Nobody on uh, nobody. Uh, draft picks. And by the way, this is defense, so I'm not really. I don't know how this would have any anything to do with Aaron Rodgers. Fo uh, to no. Uh, here are some more draft picks. No. Special teams. No. So, my friends, my Jets friends, what does that say about anybody? Because there were a lot of them, including the article I pointed out, including some of these uh, doofuses we're going to get to in just a bit, who all claimed that this was Aaron Rodgers' team, and Aaron Rodgers is the GM. And Joe Douglas was the assistant GM. The point I was saying is this is not Aaron Rodgers' team. He's not the de facto general manager. And I think this offseason, it, it was completely proven. 100%. Because, again, there wasn't one player, not one, that the Jets signed, drafted, traded for, where you can go, that was because of Aaron Rodgers. So... Just keep that in mind. I think it's real important that we don't let them ever, ever forget the media that for, especially because of Aaron Rodgers, politically can't stand a man and therefore wants to see the Jets suffer and lose. Okay? Not that the media was ever for us in the first place. The media loves to trash this organization. Why? I don't know. I think it's New York. They don't like the fans. They don't like, you know, the New York deal. You know, they think uh, people in New York, the fans, are all spoiled with all the big-time sporting events and teams and so much to choose from. And so there's that. So it's, and, and you know, Rex Ryan, when he was our coach and we were winning, they hated Rex. I mean, there was some, some that liked him because he was great, especially the Jets media, because he was so quotable and all that. But there were a lot of uh, members of the media that couldn't stand the bravado of Rex Ryan. So once again, you know, it's the Jets and Rex Ryan and it's boasting. And yeah, okay, so easy targets. Easy. We've always been easy targets. But now, okay, because of Aaron Rodgers and the whole COVID stance, all of that, now you've got the haters, the instant haters. And it has not gone away. And we'll prove that as we go on in this video. Okay, now let's talk about what happened with Patrick Mahomes and McCall Hardman because they won a Super Bowl. They won a Super Bowl. And this is what I love. And I I'm bringing this one up first, okay? Because I absolutely love what happened here. Okay? Because we're going to get into McCall Hardman. He didn't know he made the Super Bowl winning touchdown. And I do think that's important. I'm sorry. Why? Because how often have we, are we told, especially by players nowadays, the ones that have retired and now they're part of the media, how often are we told that, uh, that the, uh, the, a lot of the media, the ones that did not play the game, don't know football? We don't know football. They played the game. They know we should shut up because we don't know football. And I never hear these guys going, there's a percentage of guys. And they loop all of us who've never played the game into we don't know football. And so I have to keep reminding them every time, every time a situation occurs where a player like this can prove just how stupid some of these players can be. So, here's a guy, McCall Hardman, 
who admitted after the game that he blacked out after catching the winning touchdown. All right? And I think that's kind of funny. All right, you blacked out. You know, you're, you, you, it was funny. And because, you know, this, this matter of fact, he even said it, another fun aspect of the moment. So it's kind of funny. All right, I, I get that. It was a funny deal. But my point is, is that this is a guy, McCall Hardman, up here, nah, it's not really cooking. What makes McCall Hardman uh, a player that the Chiefs would want to trade for, which they did, he's got what it takes to be a, a, a good, you know, a solid role player in the NFL. He's got the size, he's got the speed, he's not, the, he's not an average human. That's what makes him special. There's only a few hundred of them in the league. They're all special. You could be in that little group of the NFL. That's, that's what it is. And he's one of them. Okay? But there's something missing. And that's not just it. Okay? But, it, but it's a good setup because we all know what happens when they wanted to bring up what took place... What was it? I think a month or two, or was it a few weeks after? Which was the fallout of Hardman, and for whatever reason, uh, his bitterness about his time with the Jets. And that's why we're going to go next to Colin Cowherd, or the way I prefer to recognize him as Colin Cowturd. So Colin Cowturd, here is what he wanted to say. This was, and this is an opinion shared by many in the media from McCall Hardman. I don't want to hear who's McCall Hardman. I don't know. Game winning touchdown in the Super Bowl, three catches, one with the Jets. You don't have to be a great player to have great access, to have great perspective. A lot of people in my business aren't stars, but they know stuff. They say stuff. doesn't invalidate it because you're not a superstar in a sport. I want access. I want raw, real, relevant opinions. These are relevant. McCall Hardman can play. Not as good as some thought, but he was valuable to the Chiefs. They brought him back and a big game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. Not a good look for Aaron Rodgers, who I've always said is a great talent. I don't view him as a great leader. That's okay. Kevin Durant, great talent. Don't view him as a great leader. It's not what he does. He hits shots. Aaron makes passes. But uh, you want me to take the Jets seriously in a division with Josh Allen and improved weapons, Tua, Mike McDaniel, and great weapons, and you want me to take Nat Hackett, Aaron off a of surgery, arguably worst O-line in the league, seriously. Can't, won't, no thanks, and I don't care if McCall Hardman's not a superstar player. Touchdown in the Super Bowl was a game winner. Good enough for me. So your life will overwhelmingly be a result of your choices. And Aaron, for several years, had a standard on offense. He had an offensive coach, two of them. He had a great O-line every year. PFF top 10 Packer. He had running backs. He had a standard. He had success. He had a front office that drafts and develops, in my opinion, and I've said this recently, as well as any in the NFL last 25 years. Packers draft and develop at an incredibly high level. And he grumbled, passive-aggressive shots. He went into the darkness, and he chose the Jets. Bad look. Bad look for Sala. Bad look for Aaron. Smartest guy in the room made a really bad career choice. You can't take him seriously. I got Baltimore's organization and Lamar. Buffalo was winning before Josh Allen. I got Joe Burrow coming back. I got two of Mike McDaniel. I look at all the CJ Stroud's a baller. Trevor Lawrence will bounce back. And you want me to take the Jets seriously. That was damning stuff right there. That was not good. All right, this could be good. Okay. So, that was about a two to three minute, minute rant on why Colin Cowturd should 
or should not take the Jets seriously. Okay, first of all, who gives a shit whether or not Colin Cowturd believes in the Jets? Nobody. I mean, why the fuck would he think we would give a shit what he thinks? Okay, that's number one. Number two, he goes on this three-minute rant trying to bring up a whole bunch of reasons why you shouldn't believe in the Jets because McCall Hardman, okay, who's not trash because he caught a a touchdown in the Super Bowl, who, by the way, had no idea the game was even over when he caught it. Wow, what a special player he is. What a great player he is. Okay? Don't even realize that the game is over. Yeah, that's a guy that I want on the field with me in overtime in the Super Bowl. Okay? A guy that when I throw him the game-winning touchdown, he'll look at me and go, "What's what, what, why is everybody getting so excited for? The game's over? I mean... If any any player doesn't like get that, then you know what you're dealing with. You're dealing with someone who just doesn't understand. It. He's not processing the intric- the intricacies of the game properly. Again, that goes back to my point. Hey, he's a good athlete. He's fast. Uh, he can catch the ball from time to time. Uh, you know, he has a good rapport with this offense that he was drafted into played with several years with that quarterback. So when you take a look at Hardman, he's coming into a situation. Okay. Now every player is different. Every free agent is different. Every rookie is different. When you go to a system that you never played before, the hope is, okay, that you're going to be able to make that work with the player that, Hey, you're bringing him in and who knows? I don't have any idea why Joe signed him. No, no idea. It's very possible Joe signed him because this was a guy that they felt could really help spread the offense out. We needed a speedy guy. This is a guy that we get. We, he can make it work. And then when Aaron's here, Aaron will make sure it works. Okay. But now Aaron's not here anymore. Okay. But even before that, okay, even before Aaron got hurt, McCall Hardman, while Aaron was there, okay, during the preseason camp and all that, he was not getting it. He was a major step behind. And he wasn't a rookie. He was behind. You do not have to just listen to me. All you have to do is check out what Sauce said at the time. Okay? He trashes McCall Hardman. Never earned his stripes. Okay? Okay? Now, I'm going to ask you a question, Jet fans. Who do you or who should you believe? The players, the coaches on your team? The ones that played and coached with these players? Or do you believe a member of the media? Is that member of the media, is, does he know better than... Sauce Gardner. Okay? Now you might say, well, yeah, but that happened after. And, and, and to tell you the truth, I didn't even look to find out whether or not that did happen after. But that's not even the point. So that's why I didn't even have to look. Because you don't come out and say something like that until you hear the whole story. Wait to hear the whole story before you go ahead and run your mouth and put the type of statement together that he did, that Couter did in that two or three minute video. So Sauce goes on and talks about how he never earned his stripes. Okay. And I guess you could check it out for yourself on this uh, Pivot podcast with Ryan Clark. Okay. So we move on. And... He talks about how Hardman did not perform well in practice catching punts and was called out by the coaches. And then he said, if you really know what it takes to win, you're going to make sure you let the team know. 
The reason he couldn't do that is because he never earned his stripes. He came to the facility and thought he had it made for him. And you know where that comes from? That comes from winning a Super Bowl. That comes from being basically uh, baby fed and uh, spoiled. And by the way, did McCall Hardman ever take off the way the Chiefs expected him to? Where they drafted him? Of course he didn't. Of course he didn't. Why do you think he was... He, he was basically let go. Yeah, sure. You want to go sign somewhere else? Well, we're not going to pay you. It wasn't like the Jets gave him a ton of cash. We're not even going to pay you that contract. Just, yeah, go ahead. We, we, you've been here for a few years, and you never got it. Okay, you, 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 you basically would make a few plays a year, and that's it. And then we, we and then you know maybe the fans would think, oh, this is the beginning of something. But no, it's just the coaches knew better at Kansas City too. Now, why did they want to bring him back? Well, you saw what was happening to the Chiefs receiving core last year, and at the trade deadline, you've got to make deals. You, this is it. And and the Chiefs were not in a position. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot out there. And we're going to make a, a major trade. So, yeah, okay, let's switch sixth and seventh round draft picks in 2025. We'll bring this kid back in because he does know the system. He's a guy that can be a fourth or a fifth wide receiver on our team. Give us the depth we need. If there is an injury, we can count on him because he does know the play. He know, we don't have to teach him anything on the fly. It's midseason with the trade deadline. Yeah, okay, this is a guy that can fit in. Because we've got some other young receivers and nobody's really stepped up. Because at the time, I don't even believe, I think it was still at the time, that Rice had not developed yet. So they bring him in. He does get hurt. Out for about five or six weeks or so like that. His best game, by the way, was week 17. In a meaningless game against the Chargers. He had like 11 targets and six receptions. He had one touchdown. It was the Super Bowl. Game-winning touchdown. That's it. That's all he did. He was basically a reserve fourth, fifth receiver. He was there for the depth that the Chiefs brought him in for. That's it. That's what he was there for. It wasn't like, hey, we brought McCall Hardman in because we know how awesome he is, and he scored that game-winning touchdown, and he's the man. And, of course, Cowturd wants you to, oh, well, you can't trash Hardman as a nobody player. Okay, well, that's not really what we're doing. You can say all you want about him catching a Super Bowl touchdown and all that. But I think the point is, as Sauce has said, as I have said, there's a lot more to the game than a stat, a touchdown. you got to read between the lines about how they felt about this kid, why they let him go in the first place, and why he didn't make it with the Jets. And again, what does this all mean? Is th The point is, is you don't, take what that guy says as gospel. Okay? If, you, if you're a sincere member of the media, talk show host, with countless viewership, you don't take a look at a guy like McCall Hardman with that type of background and stand behind what he says. I go, well, if he says the Jets franchise is crap and they don't know what they're doing, he must be right. That's what we do here. Again, part of the Athletic 30 Sources article. We don't know who they are. And I don't care that an, that an AFC general manager made a comment whether he did or not. Because how, who, who is that? Is every general manager in the AFC a good and smart general manager? Of course he is. We know how, how many boobs there are out there as general managers. Which one are you talking about? Okay? So for all I know, it's somebody with a losing track record or no track record whatsoever or a vendetta against the Jets. And as far as all the other sources, okay, some of them were coaches on the Jets. Okay? Some of them might have even been players on the Jets. But you know what? Just like Aaron said in one of the interviews... We've got to get rid of that kind of, again, I'm paraphrasing in a, in a really bad way, but basically get, get rid of that trash in the locker room. That's really p p 
they're trying to derail everything we're doing here and doesn't believe in what we're doing here. The, that cancer has to go. And we have to get it out. The distractions, we got to get it out because we're going to get into distractions in a little bit. We're going to get that distraction out or those distractions out. And that's exactly what the Jets have done. So you could follow the trail of the players that were traded, the players that were cut, the coaches that were let to go elsewhere or were just not resigned. Just follow that trail. Okay. And then you'll find and then you'll know which ones were more than likely part of these sources. So anyway, Sauce goes on and and uh, basically does what we would hope he would do uh, if all of this was true in words according to Sauce, and that's stick up for his team. All right, and, and here's a really good one. He thought Hardman should be grateful to, uh, to the Jets for sending him back to the Chiefs. Absolutely 100% perfect. Because that's exactly how I felt. It's like, are you kidding me? First of all, the Jets, I didn't see any other team out there give you this contract. The Jets do. So they're helping you pay your rent, uh, your food, take care of your friends, your family, whatever. The Jets organization is doing this for you. They didn't have to do it. Okay? They're going to they're gonna give you this deal and this money. Okay? You don't. Okay? According to Sauce. I'm sure if Sauce knew that. Okay? Obviously, that's the reason why he didn't see the playing field. Okay, because if he saw it, special teams uh, coaches knew it, and the head coach knew it, and the GM knew it. They all knew it. Okay, it's just not working out here. Okay, we, we, we thought, especially with Aaron Rodgers not there, this is just not working out now. Now, maybe we could have made this work a little bit with Aaron here, but now Aaron is not even here, and now this guy's completely useless. Okay, but, okay. We're going to go ahead and still, Chiefs have called, or maybe the Jets did. Bottom line is, this was no big, hey, wow, man, we got this great deal. We got it. We, we swapped sixth and seventh round draft picks. Isn't this great? What a great deal. 2025 swappers from the sixth to the seventh round. I'm glad we did this. Okay, this is actually one of the deals that you make. For several reasons. One, it's, it shows a good sign to other free agents out there that we will try to do what's best for you if things don't work out here. We will trade you somewhere where it will fit, hopefully, for you and get a chance for you to have a successful season. Okay? And then the other thing it does is it gives you a good relationship with the team. Because the Jets could have just hung on to Hardman. And who knows? I don't know. Maybe the guy playing for Hardman in the game, maybe he drops the pass part. Patrick Mahomes throws. So it was never open. I mean, I don't know. We're going to get stressed that far. But the point is, is that the Jets obviously did a good thing for Kansas City. And this is something that gets around to other general managers in the NFL. And they'll know that, okay, I can work with Joe Douglas because... He's going to throw us a bone uh, if their, their season's not, not going well. Uh, or if they just know that this is just a, you know, they'll get something out of it. But this is going to benefit us. Definitely more that's going to benefit them. They don't have to do this. So this is a GM that I want to work with. This is a GM that I know that, you know, I, I can reciprocate at some point. Uh, and hopefully we can have, make other deals that could be fair for both of us. All right. And the players are cool with it, and he's cool with it. Like, internally, there's no discord, uh, and right. that's all that matters to them. They they have to know, though. They have to know where they're residing in the New York City metropolitan area. They have to know this. They they have to know that if they're going to play it like this, the way it would be received. in and And to know, basically, that that bridge is out, and they have this much run-up of roadway, to get to the bridge, why they would just floor it and go right into the abyss makes no yep. sense at all. I mean, the the Bucks had, um, as we know, a couple summers ago, Brady had a two-week, not crazy. He's just a little, you know, he's Aaron Rodgers. And we would just, 
I don't understand it. I don't. It opens don't the door to speculation. That. That's yeah. the thing. And I it don't opens the. Get. And it opens the door to all of us talking about it and all of us speculating. But if it people, doesn't matter to them, I, I guess if they're all good inside the building, but the, the conversation outside the building is so unflattering that I don't know how it yeah. doesn't affect well, I mean, like, something. I mean, okay. So there you go. Uh, I think that's important to talk about because I think there, to some point there's an ego there by, the, by Rich and other members of the media. Because a lot, a lot of uh, media people, they have tremendous egos and they think it's about them. So, and by the way, I, I really like Rich Eisen. I like him. But overall, I think uh, this is part of that whole egotism. It's like, well, why should the Jets care about what happens outside? their locker room, outside their building. Okay, now, is it important to have the media on your side at some some points, of course, so things don't get so out of hand outside the building that it becomes a constant distraction and it eventually makes its way and gets inside the building? Of course, you have to be able to maintain some level of normalcy and, yeah, you don't want the media talking about stuff that have nothing to do with the football team. And, and I get that. Okay. But when something comes about that the organization is a hundred percent, that they a hundred percent believe in the player and that they believe that the situation is taken care of, that they believe that the players are 100% with that player and understand also what's going on and it will not affect them. Okay, then those are the things that you say, hey, if you, you members of the media want to think it's about you and want to think that we should care about it because you care about it or because you think we should care about it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, just you play that game out there. You have fun. You know, Rich, have fun talking to Albert. You guys have this conversation, but it's not, we're not going to have it in this building. And that's why... And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this up too. Let's um, let's take a, a, a let's now move on because we have we have a couple more. So let's bring in what Florio had to say. This was uh, just uh, about a month ago. Aaron Rodgers wants to have it both ways on distractions. Now I must preface this again by talking about. Mike Florio, and remember I, I, I mentioned earlier in the video about a lot of the members of the media or a certain member uh, of the population of the media, they have this thing against the Jets or especially against Aaron Rodgers because of COVID, okay, and politics. Well, there is no bigger example of that than Mike Florio, okay? No bigger example. I don't put cow turd in that one. I think cow turd has just got, I think... His ego is just through the roof. And he just is completely against what Aaron Rodgers has done and the way that he has conducted himself. That he's just, you know, sort of like uh, uh, the way a Democrat feels about Trump. So he's just blinded by everything else. It's just this, I am going to disagree with everything this guy says because, because of these things that he has done. Okay, that's different. I, so I, I have seen no proof that Cow Turd does not like Aaron because of COVID. But Mike Florio, oh, is he the poster child? Is he the poster child? Matter of fact, all you have to do is, is, is check out, you could probably Google Mike Florio's 78 tweets regarding COVID, uh, not taking the jab, when he was tested positive at that time there were 78 tweets it was this campaign by uh, the network pro football talk mike florio to just ruin aaron Rodgers, to go after aaron Rodgers because of the way aaron Rodgers felt politically about the topic and how mike florio felt 
and of course NBC and the company itself. Now that that's out of the way, so he talks about distractions just don't happen in the building during the season. They happen all year. All right, now, uh, I think this is extremely important because that's, that's the main thing. All right, and he goes on and talks about a whole bunch of other things. But the main thing that you have to understand about that is right there. It shows you that as much as Mike Florio, his job, what it is to cover football and all that, you would think that he is some sort of an expert. No, what Mike Florio is, he's an expert, he's, a, he's, he's an expert writer. I talk about this many times. There's a big difference between you, know, you go to college, you become a really good writer, and then you decide what profession you want to write about. Okay, so you're really good at writing. You're really good at that. Something I can't do. But you're really good at writing. So what am I going to do? Am I going to get into sports, politics, whatever? Sports for Mike Florio. That does not make him, and I mean it could eventually, but that does not make him an expert in football just because he follows it. So he follows football and he writes about it. But that does not make him an expert. But again, maybe he could be depending on what he talks about, what he says, what are his feelings, what, how does he understand the game and all of that. And here is just proof that Mike Fleur doesn't understand the game. Either that, or he's so blinded again by Aaron Rodgers in his hatred, based on the stance they took against each other, that he's going to just say something that maybe he doesn't even believe in. I don't, I don't think that's true. I think that this just proves how much Mike Fleur does not know about football. Because for him to say that a distraction in February, March, April, May is the same as a distraction during the season is ludicrous. Especially since every distraction is different because it depends on what the distraction is about and it, de and it depends on who it's for or with. And considering it's Aaron Rodgers and considering, again, you take a look at the building. You take a look at how does the owner feel about him, the coach, the coaches, the players especially. How do they feel about Aaron Rodgers and what was going on in February? This distraction about... Because did you really believe that there was anybody in the building, especially the players, that they were reading these stories or watching these stories about Aaron Rodgers and becoming vice president were going, oh, no. Aaron Rodgers is going to run for vice president and he's not going to be here. Oh, what are we, what are we going to do? I mean, I'm scared for my season and I don't know. And it's a distraction and I've got to, I got to call the coaching staff and I got to, I got to make separate plans. And what if he's here? What if he's not? Come on now. Come on now. Really? And again, every player is different, but because of how the, did anybody pay attention to Hard Knocks? Did anybody pay attention to last year during uh, the summer and when he was there and preseason and everything leading up to his injury, even after the injury? Anybody, anybody pay attention to when he came back to the building during the season and he, and, he, and he attended games? Did anybody pay attention to how the team responded to him? Obviously, Mike Florio didn't. Let's move on, because Mike is not done. Mike also has this to say about Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick's situation. Hassan Reddick's discontent lingers for Jets. In lieu of giving defensive end Hassan Reddick a new contract, the Eagles traded him to the Jets, and with the Jets not giving Reddick a new contract, he has yet to show up for offseason workouts. Okay. Now, let's go to this part where he says, here's the other question, one that has come up several times in recent years when a team trades for a player. Why didn't the Jets work out a new contract at the time of the trade was done? Once the trade happens, the player has leverage. Before the trade is done, the message from the team is simple. You want a new contract, your current team won't give you one. We will, so let's work something out, or we won't be trading for you. And he goes into the examples of how it's worked out that way. But that's exactly what the Jets have done with Redick. 
They traded for a disgruntled player who was taking a stand. Even if the Jets fully intend to give him a new deal, the Jets could have gotten better terms than they'll ever get now. If they'd finalized a new deal at the same time, they finalized the trade in late March. Okay, so what Mike Florio is letting you know is, is he knows better than Joe Douglas. Mike Florio might as well just be a general manager in the NFL. But it's not what he wants to do. He's qualified, but he doesn't, yeah, it's just, he's, he likes where he is. So he knows more than Joe Douglas. Mike Florio trying to say that he knows more than Joe Douglas. That Joe, you, sh you, you should have been like me. I wouldn't have done this. I would not have done this, Joe, even though I have no idea what's going on behind closed doors. I have no idea what the conversations were between you and Reddick and an agent or the Eagles or the building of what you're going to do when you bring him in and what happens if he holds out. I don't know any of this. But I know, okay, I know that you did not do what you should have done. You should have made sure that you negotiated with Reddick so he didn't have control of the situation. Okay, so here we go once again, where we have several members of the media, whether it's Cowturd, Florio, uh, and they are going to, you know, even Rich uh, or, or Albert. And they're going to let you know that they know more. They, they, they know more because they're listening to other people. They're taking McCall Hardman's stance. They're, 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 they're thinking about how important things are to them. So it should be to the Jets. Uh, I know more than they do based on history. Uh, so this is what they know. And we're going to conclude this video by going over what the Jets themselves have said and this is what dj had to say regarding aaron Rodgers' absence a little bit of a stir what's the vibe in the locker room are guys talking about that that he's not here or what's what's your feeling about it honestly bro no like ar has been here majority of the otas he's been here before i was here i think he was here the first day phase one phase two and he's been here for the majority of practices that weren't mandatory so you know I think I seen something that coach said that he, Sala said that uh, AR has something important that he had to attend, and you know that's our quarterback. If it's important to him, it's important to us. It's really not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. There you go. From the horse's mouth, one of the players, one of the key leaders on defense and on the Jets. It's not a big deal. Did, did DJ in any way, shape, or form look like I have to say this? I'm forced to say this? Or did he just not look like what I've kind of said here in this video? Like, there's there's nothing wrong. I mean, why are you going to ask this question? Okay, I'll, I'll let you know, but there's nothing wrong. He attended every other camp we had, which he didn't have to. So I think it's uh, quite interesting that that read, like a few other players that we're going to get to. Now, I don't have any other video, but I'm going to get into a few other uh, comments from some of these other players. Uh, they have a very interesting perspective that I think is uh, a lot more important than the perspective, of course, of members of the media. So let's go ahead and check those out. And let's, i tell you what, uh, let's go ahead and start with Reddick, because we're going to uh, wrap up this video with a couple of tweets, one from Hassan Reddick and one from Sauce. So this is what Reddick had to say. Here's the date, June 12th. This is right about the time they were talking about the contract. So again, Mike Florio is coming out, telling me how important it is uh, because now Joe Douglas has screwed everything up and he has got no negotiating power and Reddick can hold out like he's going to hold out. Uh, and this just shows you how inept the Jets organization is. Well, Hassan Reddick, again, who should we listen to? Do we listen to the media or do we listen to your team? Okay, it's your team, the Jets. So we listen to your coaches and your players. Who do we listen to? 
So let's listen to Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick says, stop believing the foolery you all see on these social media apps and news outlets. Running crazy narratives and you're all eating it up. Yes. I mean, I couldn't have said it any better. You're all eating it up. These crazy narratives. That's just what they are. It's what may june i guess we don't have anything to talk about so which team seems to really get us clicks which team do we really think we can you know drum up some sort of uh uh issue and some uh problems that uh can impact their season in may or june Oh, the Jets, they're easy. Aaron Rodgers, man. Let's go after Aaron's team. Even when it's not Aaron making the story because we hate him so much, and there are some of those that do, let's go ahead and, oh, this Reddick thing. Let's jump on that. Florio, of course, being one of them because we showed you a story about Rodgers and Reddick. You know, Mike's going to jump on that opportunity. How can, we, how can we destroy what's going on with the Jets because of Aaron well, here's this Reddick situation, and I'm going to jump all over that one. And yet, here's the son Reddick coming out, okay, and he didn't have to say anything. He did not have to say anything. But he came out anyway and basically said, I mean, what is this? Okay, who are you, like, kind of speaking for me? You don't know what we talked about. You don't know what, what you have no idea what we talked about before, during, and after the trade. Nothing. You know nothing. This is all speculation. I'm surprised they didn't even have like a source. But you know why they didn't have a source this time? At least, you know, some source that could put something out there regarding uh, even something with Reddick, who's new to the team. I don't know. I'm wondering if it has to do with the fact that they're gone. Those sources are gone from the building. Now, of course, they could talk to an AFC general manager and he can come out and tell you what he thinks, whoever that is. But those sources, the ones that they were getting a lot of this garbage information from, they're gone. And so don't think that the Jets haven't at least been proactive in that department because so far they have. Because a couple of stories right here, we could have had some source come out and say something. And we're going to end up with sauce. Okay, here we go. So here's sauce. There it is. Are you all really making a big deal because the 15 plus year Hall of Fame quarterback missed two days of practice after being with the team all throughout phase one, two, and three of OTAs? Okay. I, I mean,. Again, this is directly from a team leader, a member of the team, okay, is coming out there and, hey, sauce, all power to him because he has come out, he, he, he went out there and, uh, and, and, and basically came out for this silly situation uh, against Aaron Rodgers, which I thought was great. And also stuck up for the organization, which he did not have to do in the McCall Hardman situation. So he didn't have to come out and say anything for either. But he is one of the leaders on the team. And it's important that the leaders on your team say things. Because how often, like when there are some, uh, some when you do have dysfunction, real dysfunction on a team, how often, like what's going on with Kate and Clark in the WNBA? That's a great example. Wait, could, you know there's real dysfunction, not only in the league, but in her locker room, when nobody is defending her. It's obvious what's going on there. She has no help at all whatsoever. Nobody gets her back. Okay, It looks like they could take a, fl a flamethrower to her on the, on, the, uh, on the court, and no player will stick up for her. So... Those are examples of, oh, that's dysfunction. 
okay? When nobody is coming out and sticking up for you. We've had examples, Reddick, Reed, Sauce. A couple of little things going on, and they've all come out. Matter of fact, Sauce did it twice and spoke their minds. That is not dysfunction. That is not a divided locker room. And that is what you should follow. Speaking of follow. But that is definitely what you should be... Uh, that's who you should be backing. Don't be taking the word of the media against the Jets, especially certain members of the media, because we just know who they are. And I think we've, we've done a good job of pointing them out here on the show and on this video. And we uh, will continue to do that uh, if and when the time comes that we have to. But I thought this was a real important way for us to get a head start on what's going on with the New York Jets since basically February when the season ended, right after the Super Bowl, to right now. Uh, because things should be pretty quiet until training camp begins. Uh, but at some point, we are going to be back uh, with, this, uh, with, with these videos. It's not going to be a once every six months deal. I am going to come out and I am going to talk about this Jets team on their 2024 journey here on Jets Journey 24. Again, it's here right now on Prime Sports Network's YouTube channel. Uh, let us know what you think. You have questions, comments, uh, things that you would like us to talk about here, uh, anything at all, uh, let us know. And uh, of course, uh, you know the magic uh, word, subscribe. Uh, please subscribe here to the channel. If you're a Jet fan and you like to hear this kind of uh, content, uh, on this uh, channel, uh, then uh, please subscribe, like, and share, and let us know what's on your mind. That's also very important. Uh, we're going to uh, get out of here right now, so uh, enjoy, I guess, uh, the next, uh, what is it? I think we're only about a month away. It's going to go by pretty quick. And then before you know it, training camp is going to begin. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to be back to talk more about what's going on uh, with the New York Jets real soon here on Prime Sports Network. So uh, for now, we're going to get out of here, Jets fans and my Jets friends, and we'll see you next time.